Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about typewriter tools. You know, this is a subject that comes up a lot, especially on uh, social media. We start tinkering with our typewriters and we discover, you know what, it would be a lot easier if I had a certain special tool that I could use to get into this tight little place. Or how do you access this kind of piece or this part way down in there? How do you adjust it? Well, you'll find that in the history of typewriter maintenance, there were a lot of specialty tools that were developed for maintaining typewriters. And unfortunately, if you go to the average hardware store these days, you're not going to find those tools at all. So we have to, in general, make do, make shift, try to make what tools we have available work for us. So that being said, this is a little overview of typewriter tools. This is not exhaustive, nor do I have a collection, actually, of legacy typewriter tools from back in the heyday of typewriter maintenance. I wish I did. But every now and then, you'll see on social media that somebody will say, I just found, or I just was given, or I bought this whole set of typewriter maintenance tools. And I'm happy for the people that get those, but the problem is it's really hard to get those kind of tools in broader hands and a wider audience. And so you might be familiar with the Chapman Company. The Chapman Company are a company that make a uh, sets of little bit drivers, and uh, they're known for these little kits here. And recently they came up with this set called this 0623 set, and this is basically a, a set of typewriter-oriented uh, bits for, for doing typewriter maintenance. And I understand, I don't know the person's name, but I understand this was developed in conjunction with a, a typewriter expert. So we're going to kind of look at this little kit here, but I also want to talk in general, more general terms about what kind of tools like do I use, for instance, for uh, typewriter maintenance. And it may not be the same kind of tools that you use. You might have something that I don't have. We're all learning this together, but this is just in general, a kind of an overview of kind of the things that I like to use for typewriter maintenance. So stay tuned. So this is the Chapman typewriter toolkit. And it comes in this box. Now these boxes come in three colors. There's yellow, this tan colored, and pink. These are kind of a standard uh, kit box that a lot of the driver kits come in with Chapman. It's, it's a preset number of spaces for bits. And so in the case of this particular set, um, it doesn't have enough bits to fill up the entire box. So you have like four separate spaces here for four more bits. Um, it comes with a little flyer that describes Chapman, a little bit about Chapman, and they advertise some more bit kits here. And they have some basic literature here that talks about their design of their uh, they're bits that are hollow ground, so the tip of the bit is parallel, goes all the way down into the bottom of the screw slot. And that's really the main feature of the Chapman bits. Um, this particular kit, they assembled the bits with the assistance of, I, I understand, a typewriter expert. So I don't remember his name, but he also included some little artwork here. So this is the actual kit. The kit 0623 is the model number, and it has uh, two Phillips. It has a number of slotted bits, and several of these slotted bits, you get two of them, like the number 90 bit, there's two of them. There's two uh, number 93 bits and two number 97 bits. And then you also have two JIS bits. And the JIS look like a Phillips or a cross point, but they're Japanese industrials. It's a different type of bit. And if you ever work on any Japanese consumer electronics, these are the kind of bits you want to use for that instead of a Phillips. It's a nice little kit. I don't know, actually know how common you're going to need either Phillips or a JIS uh, cross point. Most of the bits that we deal with in typewriters are slotted. Okay, so what you have are these bits like this, and they attach to three different fixtures here. So first of all, you could put the bit directly into a driver handle like that if you needed a real short type of, a, of an application. But most people are going to probably use either the extension driver, like that, right, with a bit in it, such as this, or you're going to use the 
ratcheting handle that Chapman is famous for. And the way this works is it's marked with in for, for driving a, a fastener in and then on the other side is out. So the ratcheting on this handle is fixed and you have to just flip it around to get it to go the other way like that. So it's a nice uh, narrow profile driver that can help you get into a lot of different places and the bits do have these little spring-loaded balls on the uh, on the side of them that helps you lock the bit into the driver so they don't fall out. And there's also a little knurled uh, surface on the back edge of the bit that helps you turn the bit if you wanted to turn it by hand like that, which is pretty handy. Should mention also there is another little driver, this little knob, kind of a handle, and you can put the bits in it and then it gives you the ability to turn uh, a screw when you have a place where it's difficult to access but you need a lot of torque. Uh, this enables you to get a good purchase, a, a good torque on a screw. But again, this is not necessarily a universal solution for every problem because this little handle, this little wheel is rather large in diameter. So if you have clearance issues, if there's something close by the fastener, you won't be able to get this in there. So it depends on uh, the application as to how useful this is, but it is a nice little uh, accessory driver if you need it. Here's another thing I really like about this Chapman set is they give you a torque chart for all their kinds of fasteners and they tell you in uh, pounds or, or inch pounds they tell you the proper torque that they'll take so it's pretty handy to know the limitations of your bits and that's just another thing I like about what they've done here with this set. You don't see this oftentimes with other kinds of driver sets. So I am familiar with Chapman tools having worked in the semiconductor industry. We do use Chapman uh, driver bits, uh, so I am familiar with them. And they do hold up pretty well as far as uh, their ruggedness and durability. I think they're made of some pretty high quality uh, metals. So I used this wider bit. This is the number 19 bit, which is 3 eighths of an inch wide. I used it a little bit yesterday on the Hermes 3000. And you might be able to tell there's a little bit of the fading of the black finish coming off of one side of the bit so that you might find the finish might come off based on how much use you get out of it. Uh, this bit also, this smaller one, you might see there's a little bit of uh, the black finish starting to come come loose there or come off. So I would expect uh, just due to use it would uh, you would start to see some wear there. But it looks like it's a pretty high grade of steel nonetheless, despite what the, whatever coating they have on here as a finish. I wanted to show you guys a inexpensive tool kit. This is the kind of tools you would find at discount stores. This one is actually sold and marketed by Hobby Lobby here in the United States. So I picked this up for, what is it, $12, $13. It has a driver handle, has a rotating knob where you can spin it with your hand. It uses these hexagonal bits and it fits in here. You have this flexible extension and you have all of these bits here. So there are uh, a series like Torx bits, uh, some metric sockets, uh, you have some slotted, some hex, you have some Phillips, and you even have some specialty fasteners like triangular cross point bits and things like that. So if you look at something basic like the little flat, the slotted screwdriver. It's just a standard tapered bit. It doesn't have the parallel sidewalls like of the Chapman driver. So, you know, this is a $13 kit. It's not nearly the in the same price range as the Chapman, but it is a, a cute little kit with a number of different features. And one of the things I actually like about it, it comes with a pair of tweezers, interestingly enough. So, you know, you can find these kind of discount kits at the stores and you might want to pick them up. Uh, they could come in handy, but they're not going to be the perfect typewriter tool kit. You know, the frustrating thing about walking into a hardware store as a typewriter tinkerer is you see a lot of inexpensive tool kits, things like this and others, but they're really a repetition of a lot of the same things you see in other hardware stores. A lot of times they're poorly made, but they're generally the kind of fasteners that aren't really optimized for typewriter screws. But yesterday, I was working on this Hermes 3000. This recently came into my possession and uh, it was really fairly dirty, really dirty, and it actually had an exhibited an unusual aroma. It needed a lot of cleaning and uh, degreasing. 
But it also needed some serious work because all the letters, both upper and lower case, were shaded or the imprint was faded near the top. And I knew that was going to be more serious problem than just something like doing the on feet in motion adjustment. In the process of servicing this, I had an opportunity yesterday to try out some of these Chapman bits on various fasteners in the typewriter to see how it worked. And that was a really good experience. Okay, so what I'm interested in here is this mechanism right here is for the shifting. This is currently in the lowercase position. And when you shift it, this arm comes around. So there's this is the hard stop for the uppercase. And then where it rests back here is the hard stop for the lowercase. And I wanted to adjust those. So you have to loosen this flat blade screw. And then you have to loosen this nut. And that permits you to, to adjust the angle of this cam. Um, so I was using my standard Craftsman tip screwdriver in here and one of the things you notice is because the tip of this screwdriver is tapered um, I've actually chewed up the top edges of the slot like that it's just not optimal and what you need is a, a tip with a hollow ground type of tip so the side walls of the screwdriver down here at the tip are parallel to each other and so uh, I selected this number 17 bit and according to the instruction sheet, it is a 0 0.250 by 0 0.037 inch. So a quarter of an inch wide and 0 0.037 inches thick. And you can kind of see that hollow ground profile. We're right up at the tip. The uh, sidewalls are indeed parallel there instead of tapered as is the case with a standard screwdriver here. Well, first of all, just putting the bit in place, it looks like it's the right size for the slot. It's wide enough and thick enough. But the problem is that if I want to use the driver handle, I have to come in through the side opening of the frame here, of the typewriter, and it really doesn't give me uh, an angle on it because of the thickness of the the bit holder here on the driver extension and I can kind of come at an angle like this and loosen it if I want to so then the other option is to use the Chapman low profile ratchet handle and you would have to put it in this orientation for loosening and you kind of have to adjust the angle there so you can get the bit into the slot but again, um, the thickness of this kind of precludes you from easily getting the perfect angle on it. So that's a lot of problems with these universal adapter bits is going to be uh, getting in there, the thickness of the adapter. So anyway, I'm on, I'm on there right now. I'm pretty parallel to the screw uh, head. Now I can just uh, ratchet this uh, adjustment open and make the adjustment that I want to do. Okay, so for this next adjustment, um, so this back corner of the frame of this typewriter, the back right corner was mashed in. This corner was bent over, and this angle was folded back in, and the set screw here that adjusts the carriage position was kind of folded underneath the carriage bracket here. So I've straightened it out. Uh, when you do that, it gets a little brittle, so I, I can't really make any more adjustments. But I want to loosen this screw so I can adjust the back and forth position of my carriage rails to get them realigned. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to loosen this big screw here. And so I found this number 19 bit in the Chapman set. Looks like it'll work just fine. And the number 19 is a .375, so 3 eighths of an inch wide by .050 inches thick. And uh, luckily, uh, with this one, I can use the regular driver handle with the extension, and I'm able to get right in there and adjust and loosen it up and, and then make this adjustment just fine. So in this particular example, the driver handle with the extension and the bit works quite nicely here. Uh, for tighter uh, access into tighter spaces, you're going to want to use the little ratcheting driver, of course. So the two smallest bits in this kit are the number 88 and the number 89 bits. And I'm curious to see whether some of the smaller fasteners on this Hermes 3000 would actually work uh, with these bits. So let's go try them out on a few different spots, shall we? So let's take a look at this little screw right here. 
Um, this is the number 89 bit, which is the second smallest bit, and it looks like it works just fine. The 89 works fine on that screw head. It feels really about perfect. Uh, the 88 would go in there also, but the 89 is just a little more snug. So again, this little tiny screw right here looks to me like the 89 fits it best. Uh, the 88 would go in there, but it would be a little loose. So it looks feels like the 89 is about perfect for that. Okay, so this tiny little set screw here on the right side of the carriage, it looks like the 88 fits it quite nicely. Uh, yeah, that feels pretty good right there, nice and snug. So it looks like for these kind of set screws, the 88 will work for you. It's just the whole question is whether you can gain access to it because it's a bit and uh, you have this wide shank on the adapter of the uh, screwdriver itself which might be too wide to get into really tight places. Uh, of course you can also use the uh, ratchet but it has its own limitations as does the little thumb wheel driver. So there's a number of these little screws attaching various parts to this side frame of the chassis and you can see the 88 is a little bit too small. There's a little wobble in there. Looks like the 89 uh, is really the right thickness. Uh, it's just a wee bit not as wide on the on the wide dimension but it looks like it will work. It looks like it goes into the bottom of the slot just fine right there without any wobble. Okay, so there is a tiny little set screw back up here for the pivot for the bell clapper and uh, it looks like the 88 will fit that screw slot, set screw. The driver is angled, it's not perfectly in line with that set screw so I may not be able to get full turns on it and that's of course a problem always with these kind of drivers that are uh, kind of thick and not that long and so that's probably the limitation of this kind of a setup is uh, ideally you would want to have a set of dedicated screwdrivers each of which has the right tip and you might even want to have a bent screwdriver that enables you to get into a, to these tight places at an angle and still make it work but it looks like it basically would work here Sometimes there's no substitute for a specialty screwdriver like this Weeha brand, long skinny one that happens to fit this uh, set screw perfectly. Well, I had to uh, put some heat shrink tubing on here to replace that little rubber bumper underneath the space bar. So now, this is the, uh, what size is this? This is the 96 bit and uh, it looks like it works pretty good on the other side here also mm. okay okay so the feet on the bottom of the Hermes 3000 I'm going to be using this bit right here it looks like it fits really nice in there another nice thing about these hollow ground bits is that you can find a size that enables you to hold the screw with the bit so it acts like a screw starter But of course, these Chapman bits aren't the only kind of tool that I use for typewriter maintenance. So let's just take an overview of what are the kind of things I use out of my workbench for servicing typewriters. Well, cleaning brushes are really important. Uh, of course, an old toothbrush is really very useful in uh, just removing residue and dirt. Even when you're using an air compressor, you can kind of use the brush also to uh, dislodge debris. Well, another kind of brush I find really useful are these brushes you get at beauty supply shops for doing uh, hair coloring and perming. The bristles are long and it gives you a stiff bristle that's able to get in there and dislodge residue a lot easier. These mascara brushes are absolutely one of the best things you can use for typewriters. These are especially useful for getting into the segment slots and the linkages when you're trying to degrease them. You put some alcohol on here, there's enough surface tension that these bristles will hold the alcohol and you can get into the tiny little crevices and joints of your typewriter. Uh, these things are super useful. Squeeze bottles. I have a standard old grungy looking squeeze bottle that I use for isopropyl alcohol. Alcohol is one of your common solvents and I'm using the 91% that I get it 
whatever Walgreens or whatever drugstore. This one needs to be refilled. It's almost empty. So isopropyl alcohol is a very handy thing. Also, I use lacquer thinner and I use it in a squeeze bottle as well. You just got to be careful of the kind of plastic. So I had another kind of a squeeze bottle that had a black plastic cap and the uh, lacquer thinner would eat the cap up and just degrade it. So make sure you get the kind of bottles like this that uh, will last longer. It won't be degraded by lacquer thinner. I do keep, as for safety, I keep it in a can in case it leaks. It's not going to go all over my workbench though. So one thing about using lacquer thinner is you want to make sure you leave a cap on uh, when you're not using it because it has a very low vapor pressure. It evaporates easily and it'll fill up your room with toxic fumes and also they're flammable. So if you have a ignition source like I have out here in the garage, I have a gas powered hot water heater. So you have to be kind of careful with this kind of stuff. Having a good light source is really important for uh, working on typewriters. And uh, I have this strip light. This is uh, Big Larry. You can get these at hardware stores and it has like several different modes. But it has a strong magnet on the end and I have this angle bracket with a piece of wood screwed on it and I can stick this on here and the nice thing about it is a lot of your small portable typewriters are shorter than this and so you can slip this underneath the typewriter and this becomes a work light that gets really close to the subject. Well it's nice to be able to put eyelets on the ends of ribbons uh, especially if you're buying some of the newer ribbons available online that uh, are very nicely inked, but they don't have eyelets like they're DIN standard for European typewriters a lot. And they're, they're standard looking little kind of eyelets like this, right? But what you need is a crimper for the eyelets and uh, you can buy the crimpers at the uh, craft store also. So the eyelet just goes on here and you crimp it. Uh, for actually putting an eyelet in, in a ribbon though, you want to poke a hole in the ribbon first uh, so the eyelet can penetrate. So cotton buds or cotton swabs as we might call them here in the US, uh, these are always handy. This is one of the most common cleaning material I use with, for cleaning typewriters. Open end wrenches are one of your most useful tools for typewriters. I got this set at Harbor Freight Tools here in the US. There's a metric and a standard American. I found, let's see, on the metric end, this five and a half millimeter I had to grind the face of it down because I was working on my Groma Calibri and where I had to get into was such a narrow clearance that the wrench was too fat. So, so I had to do a little grinding on that. But yeah, these are pretty handy little wrenches. The only, uh, this particular brand is Moody. The only problem I have with them is a lot of times the locking collars come loose very easily and the little bit comes out, the blade of the uh, open end wrench, it's a little wide. Uh, a lot of times you'll find that you, you don't have adequate clearance uh, just because the thickness of this is so so wide, right? So this screwdriver I only have one of and it's like a Weha. So W-I-H-A Weha is a brand of screwdrivers that are very high quality and they come in sets. They have a rotating end cap where you can drive it like that. Uh, hardened metal tip and long so it's easy to get in places. I really like these and I wish I had more of them and so this would be the kind of screwdriver that I would recommend getting a whole set of. So a needle nose, uh, sharp nose pliers uh, are always handy. Uh, this uh, orange set I've had since, it's an Exolite set and I've had this since 1981 when I started my TV repair career. So this has done a lot of TV repairing. <laughs> but it's a little blunt for the use of a typewriter. I find this one here is a little sharper, a little more useful for holding things or getting into tiny places. Yeah, it helps to have a set of really sharp needle nose pliers. Those come in real handy. Now, if you're in the US, uh, it's really common to find these kind of inexpensive tools, uh, screwdrivers. These are Craftsman. Uh, Craftsman has a, a pretty good reputation in the US, but I don't think they're really that well made anymore. And the problem with the standard uh, slotted screwdrivers, of course, is always going to be that the tip tapers down. And so they're really not ideal for getting into screw heads. You'll find you end up messing up the slot because you're only applying force to the upper edge of the slot of the screw. You're not getting down into the deep inside the slot. That's the problem with slotted screwdrivers. And with a lot of typewriters, you'll have wide heads and wide slots. 
but narrow openings. And so you find the only kind of a standard screwdriver that works is a big screwdriver that's wide enough, but then it's too blunt to fit in the narrow slot very well. So these are always problematic. As far as a cross point or Phillips screwdrivers, I don't really see the need that often in typewriters. Uh, occasionally you'll find a Japanese typewriter that has a few cross pointer Phillips or JIS type fasteners, but they're not really that common. Here's another tool that comes in real handy. This is a screw starter, and this particular one, I find this tapered one up on the front here, it'd be especially useful for grabbing and holding a slotted screw head so you can start it. And then here's another uh, Harbor Freight tools uh, that kit that comes in super handy are these uh, dental picks. These are invaluable for getting into uh, tiny areas where you need to hook a spring, reattach a spring, or disconnect a spring or whatever. These are just ideally suited for that, for springs. The ones that have a sharp pointed end, these are really handy for poking holes in ribbons for when you're going to do the eyelets. You want to poke a hole into it up about here so the hole's big enough for the, the center of the eyelet to go through and that's what I use these for. So this is the manual typewriter repair bible that's published by Ted Monk and this is the so-called orange book and in near the back is a whole big section of typewriter tools by different brands and makes. These are the kind of typewriter tools that a typewriter technician would have had back in the heyday of the typewriter. Uh, people will occasionally find these kinds of tools on uh, maybe the internet or they happen to know of an old typewriter technician who has a box of these in their attic or whatever, but these are the kinds of tools that's very hard for us to get anymore and I really wish that somebody would remanufacture some of these. So here's a page out of the Smith Krona Floating Shift Repair Bible. But I wanted to point your attention to this tool right up in the upper left corner. So this large twister tool is really just a flat screwdriver-like blade with a split or a slot cut in it. And there's a lot of other kinds of tools like that that we could make ourselves, such as this tool here that's just a flat piece with a slot cut in it, or this one right here or these kinds of bending and forming tools also. We could probably make ourselves just by taking a flat tool and cutting a slot in it, and we can use these for bending and reshaping other parts. Well, here's one of the most useful tools that I commonly employ on cleaning typewriters. And I keep my air compressor underneath my workbench, and this is one that I got at Harbor Freight Tools. The bigger the cylinder tank, the more you'll be able to spray and keep a higher pressure. But any small air compressor, it will probably work okay for typewriters. You don't really need too much pressure. So years ago when I was in the TV repair business, we always had air compressors in our shops and we would typically uh, build a cabinet to put the air compressor in with sound insulation and a cooling fan so when the thing came on it wasn't so darn loud. But yeah, these air compressors can be loud. Um, don't get the kind of air compressor that you use for um, airbrushing. You want a bigger air compressor, like a little pancake cylinder or something like that. Uh, so, And also, um, it's common to find the cheap little coiled yellow plastic hoses, but I would say invest in one of these nicer rubberized hoses. They're going to last you a lot longer than a little coiled up uh, plastic hose would. Well, this was just a small sampling of the kind of tools that might come in handy uh, for servicing typewriters, and no way was this exhaustive, nor is this a definitive list of go out and get these specific tools. This is just how I evolved into typewriter repair, having been a consumer electronics technician before, and just having a lot of those kind of tools laying around, I kind of developed my own kit. Having said that, there's not a whole lot of new tools that are really uh, applicable to typewriters specifically, except like gunsmithing tools and now this Chapman 0623 set of typewriter bits. The cost of it is a little elevated, um, and that's something you're going to have to decide for yourself. I would also say those other kinds of screwdriver sets like the Weha tools uh, probably are pretty good for typewriters as well. Uh, I want to encourage you guys, don't be afraid to 
learn how to service typewriters. Start small, start with simple things. Don't get in over your head with things that you don't know how to do. And take advantage of the resources that are now becoming available, like the typewriter repair Bibles that Ted Monk is now publishing. Get yourself one of those for your typewriters and learn to service your machines. Start slow, work yourself up, and you'll find it a rewarding experience being able to take care of a lot of the problems yourself. And that makes our hobby a lot more fun. Well, I encourage you guys, hang in there, stay well, stay healthy, and stay creative. And have yourselves a great day. Until next time, bye-bye for now.